Today's a special mask Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, happy Mask Monday. Uh, today I'm wearing pajama bottoms and I'm gonna paint this monster. Um, usually I, I almost always use the Mabry Monsters nightshades um, and I almost always will mix them together and, and kind of find my own colors. So I don't know exactly every color that I'm gonna use, um, but I'm gonna start with like a really simple base. So I'm gonna spray the entire thing with Creeping Flesh Medium and then I'm gonna do an up spray of Creeping Flush Dark, and uh, then I'm gonna do a down spray of Creeping Flush Light. Um, like I was saying, I pretty much always will like mix colors and just find my own color, and, um, but today I wanted to just kinda see what happens if I just don't mix any colors and just use the nightshades as they come out of the bottle. Um, so yeah, let's base it. All right, so um, the first thing I'm gonna do is clean it. Um, I use, just use uh, citric acid and um, I just pour a little bit into a cup, like I don't exactly measure it or whatever, but into like a, I don't know, a tablespoon or two, but I just, I just put some in there and then um, you just put water in it. Um, I used to use like a rag, like I would just, I was, would use a rag to clean them and you can do that. Um, but my friend was like, why don't you just use a chip brush? You can get in there like easier. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's pretty good. You want to do this just right before painting pretty much anything. So if it's a blank mask or, or if it already has paint on it, this is going to clean the surface and it also just opens up the pores and gets it ready for paint. Oh yeah, and like citric acid might sound scary if you don't know what citric acid is, but it's not gonna like burn you or anything, but obviously you don't wanna like get it in your eyes. It'll burn, it's like getting lemon in, you know, like when a lemon squirts in your eye. It's not fun, but it's, it'll probably happen. <laughs> I'm just kind of drying it off. So I'm gonna let that dry for a second and uh, I'll go wash my hands and then We'll start spraying it. This is uh, distilled water, and that's all I use to clean the airbrush when I'm working with latex-based paints, because like alcohol and and the soaps and all that stuff. I mean, soap, a little bit of soap can be okay, like just regular dish soap, but um, especially the alcohol will like clump up the latex and it actually clogs more that way. Um, but whenever you're all done and stuff and you want to like really flush it out, then alcohol and soap and all that will help clean it. But when I'm just in between colors and stuff, I just use just distilled water. Okay, so I did the base coat. I didn't, I had originally planned on spraying the whole thing with Creeping Flush Medium and then uh, doing like an up spray with the dark and then a down spray with the light. I started out doing that, but I wasn't liking the way that the uh, Creeping Flush light sat on top of it. So I just kind of stopped that and then I just went back to the dark and the medium and I just kind of, um, you know, where there'd be shadow and stuff, I wanted more of the dark and where there'd be more light hitting it, I wanted more of the medium. I put a fan on this and let it sit for a few hours. Um, if you sit, let it go overnight, that'd be best. Then you can do what's called a rub out, um, which is a really cool, really tricky technique um, to fill in ink and all the details. So I have um, this right here. This is like a whole bottle of alcohol and then like probably two or three um, of the little FW inks worth of ink. And um, so it's mostly alcohol, but it's just basically like mostly black and brown with a little bit of red. And I'm gonna spray this all over the mask. I'm gonna cover the entire mask and I'm especially gonna focus on getting it like in all the details and everything. I'm gonna cover this. It's gonna be like totally brown. And a lot of people are kind of weirded out about that right away because it's like, whoa, you know, you're covering up all this work that you just did. I don't wanna spray it so much that it gets too runny because it'll just make a river and it'll run out of the details. And remember, this is all about getting in the details because I'm gonna wipe most of this away. And then once it dries, I'm gonna do the rub out portion, which is where I'm gonna uh, dip a sponge in 70% alcohol, no ink or anything, just 70% alcohol. And then I'm gonna squeeze and really wring it out so it's not dripping wet. I don't want it to be wet. I'm just so that it's just damp. And then I'll go over the whole thing and I'll wipe more or less as much of that ink off as I can. 
Um, I want to leave it in the details, but I want to take it off of the surface for the most part. But the mask will get like a little darker as a whole as a result of this. Um, but that's cool, you just plan that out in your base coat and then know it's going to be like a little browner or whatever. And you can do the rub out with any color. Uh, that's pretty good, pretty close. It's where I want it to be. Uh, the hard part was kind of getting into those eyelids because I, I want the eyelids to have some color to them, but we'll pull it together later on that one. Th this one came out pretty good, but here it's still a little dark, but I don't want to erase what's down there. Um, but I'm liking it. And again, as you can see, he's, he's a decent amount darker than before I started this. Um, but I like the color of him. And I'm, he's not done. I'm gonna go in now and uh, hit it with like some inks. And uh, I'm gonna give it like a little bit of a speckle effect. All right, so did the base coat, did the rub out, that's all I've done so far. So I just started throwing paint on there and I'm just gonna go in with some inks now. Um, so this is just like FW Black that I've already diluted with alcohol and just like had extra, so I just saved it. And then this is uh, Crimson from FW and this is Sepia. I was looking for an umber. I couldn't find like an umber, but we'll see what the sepia looks like. It's a little brighter anyway. Um, but yeah, I think I'm, I'm gonna go in with red and just see how red kind of reacts to the veins. Okay, so I'm just gonna do like a couple droppers full. I want this to be fairly thin. And again, I'm just thinning with 70% alcohol. It's pretty runny. Might even make it slightly more thin than that. Pretty pinkish. It's like a crimson red, but sitting on this light color, it's looking pretty pink, but I actually kind of like it. I was really thinking that I'd make it more purple, and I still can. I can go in with some blue and purple them up, uh, but I kind of like this pink look right now. And again, this is not like a color scheme that I came up with and I'm like, I'm gonna do this and I know all the steps. I'm literally just having fun right now. I'm just throwing paint at it. Okay, so, um, I started going in with this crimson red uh, on the veins and stuff, and you can see I went like a lot heavier on the veins than anywhere else. Um, but I kind of left that alone. I, you know, I, I try to stay pretty light with it. I'm probably gonna come in with a darker tone, but I was liking the pink, and I was liking the way that the pink sat on this on this uh, base. So I started just going in, and I'm just touching it in all these different places. So like spots where I think that like the skin is gonna be kind of like stretched and, and distressed. So like he's gonna have like kind of a rosy nose and around these like ridges on the, the brow line and underwards, you know, I'm gonna have like just little kind of, it just kind of makes it pop. I am liking what it's doing. You can see I went, you know, like it has kind of lips now, giving some like kind of pinkish lips. And then I just went in and, and did touches on little spots. And uh, I'm really liking where it's going actually, um, but I gotta be careful like not to overdo it because I'm already approaching there. So, but I am just gonna go to the rest of the mask, like the back and the neck and all that, and touch it with some red, and it'll just break it up a little bit. I just wanna give it some touches of that color so that it's not random, you know? It should kind of, I'm gonna put like a little bit of every color that I put on here almost everywhere. Um, but I am gonna hit these ears too, so the ears are really bare. Like whenever I go in and I hit this, it's gonna make the ears pop a lot better, so I'll mess with that a little bit. And again, this is, this is where I'm just trying to find it. I'm just trying to find the monster. Um, I'm. No one said, hey, this needs to be this color. No one said, like, you know, I want it to look exactly like that. This is just for me, and this is just a blank canvas that I'm just having fun with. I, I really pulled this out a couple of weeks ago, and it's just been sitting here just as something, like, whenever I get a minute, I'm just gonna paint that, like, just for fun. And if you do end up, like, you get like a little too much ink somewhere. Um, you can just take your alcohol and just like spray a little bit on the Q-tip. And again, not wet, like I wanna dab it out and I can just kind of touch little spots. But you gotta be really, really careful. Like this tooth, for example. When I did the rub out, I didn't do a good enough job on that tooth. I, maybe I thought that was gum, but I think that's supposed to be a tooth. So I am gonna go in there and kind of strip that down. I just wanna be careful not to hit the gums. Cool, so that's kind of my first pass at some ink. I don't know how good it looks on camera, but I'm pretty happy with it so far. I'm gonna go in with some blue, and I'm gonna uh, define these a little bit more. 
Um, even though I do like the pink look of them, I'm just gonna, I want it, I don't want it to be the same color almost as, as my highlights and I want to keep the highlights light. So I'm just gonna darken the veins up a little bit. So um, I mixed up some blue. Um, this is just fluorescent blue from FW. Mostly what I'm gonna use it for right now is I'm gonna go over these veins a little bit and I'm pretty sure it's gonna like purple it up. So I'm just gonna put some of this blue on the red spots of the veins and I'm probably not gonna just like go over the whole thing with blue. I'm gonna just touch it in little spots so that it breaks it up and gives it kind of two colors like a, a blue and a purple and a red. And I might go back and forth between blue and red and just, just see what works. And now the veins are like a clearly, like a darker different color than, than all those pink highlights that I threw in. Cause the mask is kind of pink overall now a little bit. All right, cool. Yeah, I'm actually pretty happy with that. And I just gotta be careful not to overdo it at this point. So I'm just gonna stop. Maybe I'll add more blue later. I'll probably add a little red on it, but I don't want it to look too contrived, too airbrushy. Um, as it dries and I kind of look at it, I just kind of see where I want more. Um, I did, where I really beefed up the red was here in this cut. I wanted that to look like really kind of nasty and red. It's a little bit airbrushy, but I kind of like how stark and intentional that is. It's like this like pink stripe. And then again, once I'm really done putting in the red, I'll go in with a Q-tip on these stitches and get those guys cleaned out. The next step for me is I'm gonna do some brown. The only brown that I could find, cause I need to go and get more FW ink, it's not cheap. Um, the only brown I could find is the sepia. So I'm gonna look, take a look at what it does and I might darken it just with some black. I'm just gonna, I'm hardly gonna use this. I'm gonna go into those molds that he has and I'm gonna go in with this and just see what it does. And uh, I don't know, I keep, I keep saying that I'm gonna like do like a splatter technique to pigment him, but I'm, I just haven't felt like doing it yet. Like I kind of just liking where he's going with this like skin tone base with the pink highlights. Um, also, because I waited quite a while for the rub out, he kind of already has a kind of a bit of a speckly skin tone with like all the texture because it has so much texture in the mask. So I might hit it with a little bit, but I'm just, you know, I'm not doing it just because I said I was going to. You know, if, if I like the way that it looks, then I'm just going to leave it that way. All right, so um, I'm pretty much wrapped up on like hardcore painting. Um, I'm pretty sure that I've decided against doing any kind of like speckling technique. I like it, how it looks. I like kind of the smoothness to it. Um, the back is where there's the least kind of detail, obviously, but I'm going to do some hair and you know, it's like the back of the head, so it's okay. Um, but what I am going to do right now is I'm doing that thing where I just spray it with just the Q-tip. It's a little bit of alcohol and dab it off. And it's just like a little mini rub out basically, or I'm going to clean off these stitches because there's a lot of red overspray on them. And that's not where I want the red. I want the red around the stitches. So I gotta be careful not to take the paint off exactly where I want it. I, I wasn't sure exactly how I was gonna paint the stitches and I think I'm gonna paint them by taking paint off and then just leaving them because I actually really like that. All right, so I think I'm just gonna call it for today. Um, I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna do any kind of speckle technique. Um, we'll do that in a future video. I'm not, like I said, I'm not gonna do it just because I was planning on it. Like, I just wanna paint it until I like it, and I actually am pretty surprised at how much I like it, mostly using just two colors. Um, I went in with the brown on the moles and stuff like that, but more or less, I just did the skin tone, I did the rub out, and then I used the pink on like almost everything, a little bit of blue, um, and then I went in brown for the moles, and then I wiped off the paint from the stitches in the teeth, and I'm pretty happy with the way that those colors look, so, um, all I really need to do before I hair this thing is uh, paint the eyes and then I'm gonna put gloss on the eyes and the teeth and maybe around here where he's got the open wound and then I'm gonna put hair on it. So I think I'm just gonna save that until next week. Um, if I knew what color I was doing the eyes, maybe I'd just do it real quick, but um, Dante's gotta get home. It's late at night and it's hot in this garage. So. Next week, we'll find out what color the eyes are. If you want, leave a comment, suggest what color you think would look cool for these eyes, and um, maybe that'll be the color that I use. See you next Monday.